What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again, and today we're going to be taking a look at what I consider the best CPU for high-end emulation in 2022. Now that's as of making this video, because as we all know, technology keeps moving on, these CPUs start to get faster, but right now, out of everything that I've tested on the channel, this is the fastest CPU for high-end emulation. I mean, hands down, as of making this video, you really can't get any better than this. And if you're a regular viewer of the channel, you know I love AMD. The Ryzen CPUs and APUs are some of the best out there right now. But you can't deny the awesome single-core performance of Intel's new Alder Lake. And right now, in this PC, we have the 12900K. Of course, it's an expensive CPU. And it draws a lot of power, but it does put out some really good single and multi-core performance, some of the best that I've seen in a desktop CPU. Now, I'm not talking about workstations like a Threadripper or something like that. But for the past few months, since I got my hands on the 12900K and even the 12600K, this has kind of been my go-to CPU for my personal emulation needs. This setup here is overclocked on all 8 performance cores to 5 GHz, and with the CPU itself it has a total of 16 cores with 24 threads. We've got those 8 performance cores and 8 efficiency cores. And when it comes to emulation on x86, the CPU is definitely the most important part to it. But nowadays, with all of these new renderers, Vulkan, OpenGL, DirectX 11, DirectX 12, your GPU is going to play a big role in this also. What I wanted from this setup here was a 4K experience with basically everything that I could throw at it. And with the 12900K paired up with a Zotac RTX 3050, not a super high-end card, we can definitely do it with this system here. And real quick, I just wanted to show you a couple CPU benchmarks that I ran on this system with the 12900K running at 5 GHz. Checking out Geekbench 5, single core is coming in with a 1,984, multi 19,749. Absolutely amazing scores here, and when it comes to emulation, single core is definitely really important, but for the newer emulators that are coming out, they do utilize those extra cores, so multi-core is becoming just as important as single core, and we've got some really good performance here. The last one here is Cinebench R23, and remember, this is on an air cooler. It's a pretty massive air cooler, but I could probably get a little more out of this or a little more overclock. But with this CPU overclocked to 5 gigahertz, we got a total multi-core score of 27,492. It's getting real close to that 32-core, 64-thread Ryzen Threadripper up there. In this video, we're going to be testing out some high-end emulation at 4K resolutions on this system, but before we get started there... This video is brought to you by URCD Keys. I've actually been using this site for a couple years now. They do offer Steam Keys, Origin, Uplay. They even offer Microsoft applications like Office. But the main reason that I use URCD Keys is for their Windows Keys. Right now, their Windows 10 Pro OEM key is $19.84. But if you use code ETA at checkout, you can get 25% off. I've personally had really good luck with these Windows 10 keys, and like I mentioned, we do a lot of builds over here on the channel, so this does come in really handy to get these keys much cheaper than we could anywhere else. Now there is one thing to keep in mind. When upgrading your PC using a key like this, you can change your GPU, you can change the RAM, the hard drives, the CPU. The only thing that'll stop this key from working in the future is swapping out the motherboard, but they're definitely cheap enough. And another great thing about buying from here is they do accept PayPal. Real quick, I'll show you the activation process. Super simple to do. I just did this build here. I need to activate Windows. I'm going to head over to my updates and security. We're going to go to activation. As you can see, I've got Windows 10 Pro, but it's not activated. So I'm going to change product key. I'm going to paste it in here. Choose next. Choose activate. And Windows is now activated. We're ready to go. So we've got Windows 10 Pro. It's activated. My warning is totally gone, and basically that's it. They'll email your code once your payment is processed, and that's basically it. If you're interested in picking up cheap Windows 10 keys for your new PC builds, I'll leave a link in the description. So first up, we have PS2 using PC SX2, 4K, OpenGL back in, and when it comes to upscaling this, that GPU plays the biggest part in it. But trying to run these games with no hacks on in the background from PC SX2 really does take a toll on that CPU. And we'll take a look at the next game here, Shadow of the Colossus. We're pulling around 40 to 45 watts out of that CPU right now. And this area here, kind of looking back at this cathedral or, you know, the monument itself, is a hard spot to emulate. Next up, we've got some original Xbox emulation. And for this section here, I tried two different emulators. Right now we're at 2x resolution, and again with upscaling something like this, that GPU does play a big role in it. 
but you can see the CPU with this emulator here is pulling around 85 to 88 watts. It's definitely hitting that CPU up pretty hard, but this isn't even really the start of it. Uh, we're going to move over to the next original Xbox emulator, and that's going to be CXVX Reloaded. With this one, I've always had much better luck with it. We're only pulling close to 50 watts, and I was able to take this up to 4K with CXBX Reloaded. And a game like this, DOA 3, upscaled, even the 1080p, does look like a totally different game with this emulator here. Next up, we've got some SimU at 4K, Bayonetta 2. This is just a really great emulator. They've done an amazing job with this one. We're only pulling around 40 watts, but we're able to take this up to 4K with no issues at all. I did test a couple other games and I had no problems. With this one, not even a single dip from 60 with this setup. Where we only see reality and make it match our rules of the world. AC Checking out some Xbox 360 using Zinnia. I did try to unlock this frame rate, but it crashed immediately. And even with it set at 30 FPS, it still crashes. This is really coming down to the emulator itself. It's still very early for this, and you will get crashes with some games. But there are some games that do work pretty well, like Red Dead. So with this, I do have V-Sync off, so we can try to run this at 60. And this has been one of the hardest games to emulate in my experience. We're pulling over 100 watts from that CPU right now, up to 120 in some instances, and we still can't quite get a constant 60 out of it. That RTX 3050 is also maxed out. This is just one of those emulators, and specifically this game that takes a lot out of your system. And the final one here is PS3 using RPCS3, 4K, Vulcan backend. We're pulling over 150 watts from this CPU. There are games out there for this emulator that don't pull over 60 watts with this setup, like Tekken 6, but with the harder to emulate stuff like Skate 3 here, you can see that it's really pushing that CPU. And I've actually seen this CPU max out at 220 watts when compiling the shaders for this one and God of War 3. But it's still running this game really, really well. We're at 4K, Vulcan backend, 60 FPS with Skate 3. So this is one that runs well with high-end hardware and RPCS3, but there are still PS3 games that really aren't compatible with the emulator. In the compatibility list over on their website, you'll see it might be in-game or playable, and one of those is God of War 3. So with this here, I'm trying to push it as hard as I can. We're pulling over 180 watts out of this 12900K, and it cannot do 60 FPS constantly. Indoors, yes, it will run at 60, but as soon as we get out here with a lot of particles on screen, it drops on down. Now this is really coming down to the emulator itself. There's constant updates, and in the future, I suspect that this will run, you know, on lower end hardware at full speed. But right now, since this game isn't listed as playable with RPCS3, it will struggle even on high end hardware. So yeah, I mean, it's definitely an expensive CPU if you're just building something for emulation, but with a setup like this, it's not specifically designed for emulation. This is a question I get all the time, you know, what is the best CPU for high-end emulation? And in my opinion, the 12900K and the 12600K are the way to go right now. Don't get me wrong, you can get by with a 3000 series Ryzen, even a 2000 series Ryzen doing 1080p just fine with a lot of the stuff that I showed off. But if you're looking for the best of the best right now as making this video, then you can't go wrong with these Alder Lake CPUs. That single core and multi-core performance is absolutely amazing and it definitely helps out even with the lower end stuff. And when it comes to the higher end emulators that need those extra cores and threads, this can definitely provide it. And I will say when AMD releases their 7000 desktop CPUs, they're probably going to beat this out for a few months. Then Intel's going to come back swinging with something a little more powerful. That's exactly how it works. So if you're happy with what you have, just stick with it, play your favorite games, and have fun doing it. But this is a question I get all the time, and I figured I'd go ahead and make a quick video on it. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. Let me know in the comments below what CPU and GPU combo you're using right now in your emulation rig. I'd actually like to see what a lot of people are using, whether it be AMD or Intel. But that's it for this one, and like always, thanks for watching.